Hey everyone, it's Dr. Sam Robbins. Now I've had a bunch of people ask me about ketogenic diets and low carb diets and how they affect your hormones. More specifically, how they affect your testosterone, your growth hormone, your thyroid hormones and your metabolism, and finally, your cortisol and stress hormones. Now today, I will speak about more specifically about cortisol and your stress hormones. In future videos, I will be speaking about each of the other hormones I discuss and how keto diets affect that. Basically, your testosterone, your growth hormone, and thyroid. So, if you're not already subscribed to this channel, please do so now and click the bell icon to be notified when the other videos about this topic are released. And this is a real important topic for anyone who wants to lose weight and fat since this is a major reason people are on low carb and keto diets. And more importantly, if you are an athlete and exercise, right, cardiovascular wise, or if you're a weightlifter and you want to basically maximize your muscle growth and strength, and even more specifically, older people, especially women, since a keto and low carb diet affects them even more. All right, so what is a ketogenic diet? As a reminder, keto or ketogenic diet is when the majority of the food you eat and the calories you consume are from fat. It's technically a very low protein and almost no carbohydrate diet. Now, many people mistakenly think a keto diet is just means that it's little or no carbs and you can eat as much protein as possible. For example, you can have this huge big steak and just fry it up in a bunch of fat or butter. But this is false because protein converts to glucose, which is sugar or carbs, through gluconeogenesis. Thus, the more protein you eat, the harder it is to actually get your body in ketosis, which is the whole point of getting in a ketogenic diet, because you, the carbs, basically you're still kind of eating carbs, your brain thinks, because of the higher protein intake. The protein converts to glucose, which is like eating carbs. This is why a true keto diet, which was originally invented a long time ago, is really hard to follow because it's a bit disgusting because you're just eating almost all fat. This is what that Atkins diet was about a long time ago. And for marketing reasons, right, to sell it better, people try to make a keto diet more palatable and tasty by adding a lot more protein. It's, it's yummier. But later discovered it was really hard to get in a true ketosis because the protein was basically converting to glucose, which is like carbohydrate and sugar through gluconeogenesis, which I just mentioned. So in regards to keto and very low carb diets and how it affects your cortisol levels, simply stated, a keto diet have been shown to increase stress hormones such as cortisol. Even more so, people who exercise regularly, people who do cardiovascular, especially weightlifters. A keto or even just a very low carb diet has been shown to increase stress and cortisol levels while simultaneously at the same time lowering testosterone. So it increases cortisol, which we don't want, and it lowers testosterone. Remember, cortisol, the stress hormone, opposes testosterone. As cortisol levels go up, testosterone comes down. We don't want that. This means there's a decrease in muscle and strength and stamina, while there's an actually an increase in body fat over time because of the hormonal imbalances. Obviously, this is the opposite of what you want. And this is even more pronounced or negative in older men and for women because at, they, they don't have as much testosterone to protect themselves during times of stress and high cortisol levels. As a side note, below this video in the description area, I've listed two great ways to actually lower cortisol levels naturally if you still want to follow a keto low carb diet. Just to make sure you take a look at the information below in the description area after you've watched this video at the end. And by the way, let's pause for a second. Some guys will watch this video and say, hey, I know so-and-so is a keto diet. They look great, this and that. Look, some people have great genetics or they're taking drugs or they've got something to sell you when it comes to keto diet. It's very hard if you want to lift weight and gain muscle and get lean while being on a keto diet. As far as why cortisol goes up on a keto diet, there's lots of reasons why cortisol goes up and carbs when they're very low. One primary reason is basically your body is trying to increase energy levels since there's a lack of glucose, which is from sugar and carbs. That's what your body mainly runs on fuel-wise. 
Just remember, in some ways, a ketogenic diet mimics starvation, which is stressful to the body. After a few days or weeks of being on a keto diet, your body goes into a metabolic state called ketosis. Again, stressful. Your body will then use an alternative fuel source called ketones to survive since there is no glucose or sugar available. Again, it's stressful. Ketones for brain energy and fuel might be fine and even preferred by some people temporarily, right? This is one reason people get into ketosis and run on ketones, but not for long term, for many, many months or even years. It's difficult to sustain that kind of diet. And definitely not if your goal is to build muscle and anyone who exercises regular or athlete. I don't put people on these ketogenic diets if they're athletes or lifting weights and, and, and all these things. Now, before you start to debate me on this, I told you some people do well on ketogenic diet and can stay healthy in long term. However, these are the exceptions to the rule, all right? Most of us regular people, long-term keto diets will have negative impact negative hormonal changes, we don't have the genes, we're not on drugs, we don't have awesome genetics like some of these people who are on it, and they don't do this year in, year out. Despite what they show in their videos or look how great I look, trust me, it's genetics and it ain't look like that five or 10, 15 years ago saying I'm on a ketogenic diet. Trust me on this, I'm doing you guys a favor. Again, for most people who exercise regularly, a long-term keto diet, will have negative effects. So what's the solution? What do you suggest? What are your options? I think a keto diet can be helpful for people who have, for example, epilepsy or seizures, or at least being on a very low carb diet. Or people have neurological disorders, such as Parkinson's disease and Alzheimer's, which I have in my family. Or for very sedent sedentary people, people who don't exercise at all, who are very overweight, okay, who can slowly, what I suggest, cycle into a keto diet and then cycle off back and forth throughout the year. But if you have a stressful lifestyle, whether emotionally and or physically, if you exercise regularly or may can, you know, or, or lifting weights especially, you should reconsider keto or very low carb diets. Or again, make sure at least you cycle it on and off. And if you do take it, make sure, if you are on a keto diet, make sure you manage your cortisol and stress levels by taking specific supplements, all right? And, and again, manage your sleep and all these things. Two of the best supplements to manage your stress level is a product called Stress and Cortisol Relief and also Vitamin C. I suggest you take a 1,000 milligrams of vitamin C three times daily because it, it, it's water soluble, so morning, noon, and night. I also just taking an amazing product, which I take myself, is called Stress and Cortisol Relief. Take it, take two pills after exercise, so lower your stress, and also before bed. Those are the times you want to have the lowest stress and cortisol levels. Again, below this video in the description area, I posted very important information about this, ways to lower cortisol and stress levels and improve your hormones at the same time. And again, if you want to follow a keto diet, cycle it. Make sure you manage your stress levels. Again, cycle in and out, maybe two months on, and two weeks off being on a keto diet. And in future videos, I'll discuss other hormones that I mentioned today earlier, such as how keto diets affect your testosterone, your growth hormone, and thyroid levels. However, you wanna to stick to it totally fine, let's discuss the best way to maximize your results. Subscribe and share this video with others to help them, and I hope you have a very happy and healthy day.